Hello Penguinauts, I'm the Beardy Penguin and welcome to Kerbal Space Program Space Race. Today we're launching Muna 1, which is a play on Luna, which were the Soviet missions to the moon. Because if Tape's going to name his missions Kapolo, I'm going to name mine Muna. Not saying I'm a communist or anything, but, you know... Shut up. Uh, there's something I was. There's, <laughs> there's something I'd like to point out as well. Uh, you know the uh, the lead scientist on the Apollo missions uh, was Werner von Braun, who was none other than an ex-Nazi. And well, there you go. Tapers a Nazi confirmed. You heard it here first, everybody. <coughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I know. I know the Soviets used more Nazi scientists than the Americans did. But be quiet before I throw you into a forced labor camp. Anyway. So, yeah, we're going to Minmus this time. So, we've already been to the moon. This time, we're going to go straight to Minmus and we're going to go do, do our EVA reports, blah, 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 blah. We had to have quite a high apoapsis because we had an engine to test. And then we used the service propulsion system, which they used on the Apollo missions, actually. So, we're using a mixture of Soviet and uh, American engines here, thanks to KW Rocketry. And there we go. We also were getting out every so often to reset the science experiments because I, I kind of forgot that pilots could do that. I thought only. Um, only scientists could take data out of stuff, and that means I can save a lot of weight on re-entry because I don't have to bring all the materials bay material bays back uh, to Kerbin. I can just take the data out of them, and it saves me a hell of a lot of weight on re-entry. So I don't know why I didn't realise. I thought only scientists could do it, uh, but no, no, uh, actually pilots can do it as well. We're actually taking two tourists on this mission as well. So we've got a three-person capsule. We've got a Val, and then two random tourists. Now they're only paying to have an orbit around Kerbin. But we're taking them to Minmus. <laughs> so they, they are getting quite a lot for their money. Because um, <laughs> we technically have taken them into, into Kerbin Orbit. We're just taking them to Minmus as well. Because, you know, we're a nice space agency. We, we give our Kerbals enough life support to, uh, to actually go to Minmus. Unlike Tape, who almost killed Jebediah. Saying that, like, I almost... I'm not saying I almost killed, but like, I found out that I didn't carry enough space, enough uh, CO2 scrubbers on my first moon flyby. And that's that's why you, you do these things, to discover the faults in your things. I discovered I didn't have enough life, life support on my first flyby. Tape didn't discover it till his second flyby. So when he thought, oh, I'm going to do the penguin thing, you know, I'm going to go into polar orbit and go over all the different... Uh, biomes, he realised, ah, I can't actually stay in orbit because Jeb is going to die. Good job, Tape, good job. Have a, have a, very much like Apollo 1, okay, dude, you don't test your stuff enough, because, uh, of course, after Apollo 1, they, um, didn't allow any manned flights until they fixed things, so it wasn't until Apollo 7 that they actually had another manned flight, so, well, maybe Tape, maybe, uh, Tape should have actually let Jebediah die there, and then they would have learnt a lesson, maybe work on their unmanned program a little bit. Uh, but anyway, so here we are. We are at Minmus, going into a polar orbit. And uh, I was actually a little worried about our fuel consumption here because holy crap, did we cut it really, really fine. But we had the perfect amount of fuel for this mission. Um, so we only had a little bit left, but we just had to maneuver in Minmus orbit, which obviously doesn't require much because, well, Minmus has got very low gravity. And um, yeah, and then we just had to come back. So we had pretty much exactly the right amount of fuel for the mission, which I was very, uh, I was very proud of myself, actually. Even though I've done Minmus missions about 50,000 thousand times. I could have descended to the surface with Val's EVA pack, but that would just be lame. Just like, no, that's lame. And also, you know, one mission, one purpose. We went, we came to do a Minmus orbit, and we did a Minmus orbit. We got all our science from all the different biomes. There are far fewer biomes than there are on the moon, so it didn't take that long. And uh, we just went straight back with our tourists, who made um, far less than they should have, really. Maybe, maybe we'll... Uh, Ah, no, we'll just sue their travel insurance or something. Uh, we also got a little reminder there telling us, oh, you've got, I think it was a Moho encounter, Moho uh, transfer window. But uh, we don't have the technology to go there yet. Uh, but there is a Jewel one soon, so I don't know, maybe we'll send some probes to Jewel. Although they are going to take quite a while to get there, and each turn is only a month, so that's 30 days long. So, I don't know, we'll weigh up the pros and cons of sending a probe now as opposed to later. It, it might actually be a good idea, but we'll see. Um, but anyway, so yeah, we are just coming back into the atmosphere. I forgot to enable... Uh, the atmospheric effects again, so you just get a bit of a glow, but I, it looks cool enough, I guess, doesn't it? And yeah, as you see, it's actually much easier now that uh, we don't have the materials bays and all of that 
you know, annoying stuff, a bit of stuff blowing up there. Just trying to give the tourists a good view of the explosions, so maybe we can, you know, eke a bit more money out of them, mate. No, that didn't work very well. They, they paid us before the trip. Why didn't we... We should have just left them in space and said, if you don't pay us more for taking you to Minimus, we're not going to bring you back. But no, we, we, we couldn't do that because, well, we're not, we're not Nazis, and we definitely don't use Nazi scientists for our space program. Unlike tape, of course. Werner, Werner von uh, Kerman, of course, is, is Tape's Tape's lead scientist on his Capollo program. Because, uh, well, Tape is Tape is a bit of a Nazi, isn't it? What, why is it these these KSP series of Tape always devolve into political commentaries? I, I really don't know. Anyway, so we've got a load of science and a load of money and a load of world firsts and stuff. So that was a really really profitable mission. Our next mission not so profitable. I thought, you know what would be cool? Let's build a space station. And then I accepted a contract for a space station that's far too big for me to build. It needs 4,000 units of liquid fuel. It needs a cupola module, docking ports, uh, space for six kerbals. And with a level 2 launch, I can't launch that much. I just cannot launch it. So I had to reach out to Tape and say, um, <coughs> uh, Tape, would you mind launching 1,500 units of fuel? I'll launch the cupola, I'll launch uh, space for three kerbals, I'll launch 2,500. I wanted to launch 3,000, but I couldn't quite do it. So, 2,500 units of liquid fuel, not oxidizer, just liquid fuel. I said, I'll launch that, and then you launch your side, and we both get the contract. And Tape was like, you know what? Yeah, so if Tape gets the same contract as me, um, then he will do that. And obviously, you'll get the world first from docking to uh, spacecraft and orbit. I put tons and tons of life support into this thing. So a little Kerbal there, Jawlock Kerman, he's a, a new pilot that I hired because we don't really want to leave Val rotting in space. Uh, <laughs> um, and we named this Calyut 1, Calyut Station, because obviously the first space station ever was a Soviet space station called Salyut 1. And I thought, well, you've got to put a K on it, haven't you? So it's Calyut Station, um, just think, well, yeah, nobody's gonna... <laughs> I didn't even know the name of the first space station, I just thought, should we call it Kia instead of Mir? But no, no, first space station, because uh, the Soviets, they loved their space stations. The Russkis just love their space stations. But anyway, we actually ran out of fuel with a periapsis of 50 kilometers, so I thought, you know what, let's use our anti-Kessler syndrome boosters. Um, they were meant to propel the stage back into the atmosphere so it wouldn't be floating near the station and come back and hit us later on, but well, getting to orbit is slightly more important, so there we go. But we also had a contract to rescue someone called Maxki, okay, and she actually drifted really close because I thought, well, if we're going into low carbon orbit and there's someone needs to be rescued there, we might drift close enough for me to rescue them, and that they did. She actually drifted, uh, I think, about 11 kilometers out, and that's enough for an EVA pack to go. So I thought, you know what, while we're up here, we might as well rescue Maxki. We've got enough... Um, if we've got enough life support, now with that contract is going to be sitting there for a while because I do need to bring her back and recover her. But um, yeah, she's just going to chill. But I think, um, yeah, she, she's out of life support. So she's literally about to die. Um, and she also didn't have any oxygen in <laughs> any oxygen in her EVA suit. So I guess she had to hold her breath for this little spacewalk. I'm not entirely sure. I got back in the station. Was the station? The station. The station was spinning. No, the station was spinning. Um, yeah, the spation was sting and stinning everybody, and uh, I had to correct it. But we've got a little bit of RCS on here, but hopefully tape brings up uh, a bit more RCS and some more resources. But that was the end of our thingy. Bobby. That, that contract doesn't even pay well. I don't even know why I did that station contract, to be honest. But I guess it's kind of cool, tape and I doing some... Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to say it, because it sounds weird. Cooperating in space. There you go. There you go. I'm not saying anything, anything weird, okay? Anything that... Anything with the word docking in it, okay? Uh, so anyway, uh, we've got another contract to go do some pressure scans, but this time it's above 18 kilometers. Not below. Slight problem. I, <laughs> I can't make a plane that goes that high. I thought, you know what, if we make a plane with loads of fuel when we have some afterburning uh, turbofan engines, it should be able to get to that altitude, right? Uh, no, so I call this the swan because it's a bit of an ugly duckling. I mean, look at it. It's it's not all that pretty, is it? Um, but it does the job and it just about fits into the level one requirements. And um, yeah, I really did. I thought, you know, what, this will be fine. This uh, I had a couple of other contracts as well, so it was OK. But um, yeah, I thought it could actually do this mission and it couldn't. It just couldn't get enough speed um, to to get to the altitude that I needed it to get to. So we spent ages and I mean ages flying over there and 
for nothing, really. Uh, I guess, yeah, I am kind of spoiling it, but I, well, this is the problem with post-commentary. I just, my mind runs way too fast to wait until the point in the video. Um, so yeah, as you see, we actually entered the zone and we just couldn't get enough altitude. Even with turning the engines onto the afterburning mode, which is what I did, which burns a hell of a lot more fuel, but we had loads of fuel, so it was fine. Um, yeah. We didn't even need to bring this much fuel. I always bring too much fuel, just, just for redundancy, just because... You never know, tape might nuke the Arctic or something, so we might need to fly to the KSC. You, know, you can never be too careful with these things. Um, so, yeah, there you go. And also, please tell me, you guys, about the post-commentary thing. Um, do you prefer it in post-commentary? With a bit of smooth jazz in the background, which I'm not going to lie, does sound a bit like porn music, but... Well, yeah, maybe we should, maybe we should use classical music and leave the porn music to Titler as well. You know, <laughs> um, sorry, sorry, I'm <laughs> getting a little bit off topic here. But yeah, do you like the post commentary format or would you prefer it if it's just highly edited sections of live commentary? You guys tell me, I do not know what you guys prefer. Because um, collaborative warfare tends to be a hell of a lot more live commentary. So maybe this is just a bit more chill, a uh, bit of a more chill series. Uh, doing some interesting acrobatics there as we stalled the plane. But for the most part, it was an okay flight. And it's actually an okay plane, even if it does look pretty hideous. Um, and we just came back down for a nice little landing. But I did not accept that. This has become a matter of pride now, okay. So... Valentino is determined to do this, so <laughs> so we launched the Falcon, which is an abomination, frankly. That's all it is, and I thought, this, this will get up to that speed. This can get up to that altitude easily. No, it can't. <laughs> it can't. It can't get to the altitude. It's so close as well. It's so close. Look at that. Look at that. It's just struggling. Just, come on. Just a little, just a little higher. No. No, I mean, we uh, Nope, nope, just can't do it. Can't do it. So I just thought, oh, I'll just give up. Uh, we had to test some engines, so there you go. We just had to test them uh, landed on Kerbin, so we just decoupled them there. And here we go. This is a highly edited version of the Swan. And I didn't realise the wings, they aren't fixed wings. They're actually giant winglets. I didn't realise that. Uh, I thought they were just bog-standard wings. So the Elevons do kind of glitch out a little bit, and they were kind of pointless. Um, but this thing is hella maneuverable. I didn't even intend it to be, but it's got vectoring engines and the wings themselves swivel. So, uh, to say that this thing is maneuverable is a bit of an understatement. Maybe I should make something like this in Collaborative Warfare. I don't know. Uh, because the wings swivel, like... <laughs> it's, I bet there's some kind of prototype plane out there that does this, but I do not know of any planes that actually do this. Um, and these are, these are the smallest ones. Like, I don't know if B9 had some kind of scaling glitch or something. Um, I, I think these should be a lot smaller because there are much bigger ones, like, beyond the size of this plane that swivel, um, which is a bit weird. Uh, but anyway, so we, we had some pressure contracts, you know, below altitude, so a nice easy one, obviously, the testing the engines on the launch pad and stuff. So, you know, something nice and chill just to actually give us some money because, well, we had our not particularly profitable uh, space station, which I might even have to pay tape compensation for if he doesn't uh, get the same con or similar contract to me. Though he should, because the station contracts are always pretty similar. Um, but anyway, tape just has to send up space for three Kerbals and 1,500 units of liquid fuel, and the station will be complete, which will be pretty cool. And we can leave them up there, and I'll, maybe I'll rescue them at some point. Probably, maybe? Maybe. Maybe I'll have more efficient engines. I can fit it into a level 1 launch. That would be quite nice. Maybe I'll just have a turn with more efficient engines and stuff where I just do stuff in low uh, in low curb and orbit. I'll, I'll probably have a turn at some point where I do that. Anyway, so my thinking was, hey, let's land on these flattish mountains to get more science. Um, that's a good idea. And no, it wasn't. But the plane sort of survived and it didn't cost that much money anyway. So, quite a bit of science, quite a bit of money, but uh, not the most profitable turn, not the most successful turn ever, um, with our space station costing us a hell of a lot of money. Um, <laughs> that was a big launch. Um, and obviously those, those, those planes. But anyway, not the worst turn ever. Thank you for watching. I'm the Beardy Penguin, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.